Hello, welcome to Waterloo School Student News Expo Edition. I'm Richie Miller. I'm Kayon Moore. Fifth graders at Pointer Elementary are getting a chance to learn about STEM through a fun program called A World in Motion. Did you know STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math? Wow, that's, that's a good thing to, to, to learn about. Yeah. Let's go inside the Pointer classroom. We're making our jet toy to get it to go as far as possible and carry and make it weight. And make sure it goes straight. A World in Motion is a program that brings science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, to life in the classroom. In the Jet Toy Challenge, a fictitious toy company called Earth Toy Designs wants students to provide a variety of interesting designs for a new line of balloon-powered vehicles made from inexpensive, common materials that will appeal to other children. Working in design teams, students will build and test model jet toys using different nozzles and collect and analyze data to understand the effect of nozzle size on the performance of the toys. They will create other designs and test them, then give a formal presentation of their final jet toy designs. We added these straws, and we think the theory made it, the theory worked to yeah. make it gather air to go through there, so it can go, so faster. It can go faster and farther. I think it's fun being together as a team and working on it. If I worked by myself, it wouldn't be easy. It'd be harder. I like that we get a um, actually create like something out of recyclable stuff. Here, this is the best project because we're getting to do um, speed testing and learn about air. The Jet Toy, a World in Motion program, is a fantastic opportunity for every fifth grader in the Waterloo schools to gain hands-on STEM experience at an early age, preparing them for middle school, high school, and beyond. I'm Deontay Woodard. I'm Shadrack Wilson. You know what? Speaking of STEM, Shad, learning starts at an early age for these Waterloo school students. Why don't let these viewers watch our early education students learn? It's really fun. Early childhood and preschool is exciting, innovative. Sparks are flying everywhere at the knowledge and the learning that's occurring in our classrooms. We have about 600 uh, pre-K students all across the Cedar Valley. Our focus is on um, pre-literacy skills and math, and we have a very, very strong initiative and focus now on STEM activities and how we can get our youngest engineers and get their imagination going. So we're just very, very excited and grateful for the opportunity to serve the district's youngest students. And today you're going to witness and see the students playing with a mag wall, which we're just so grateful. Um, we got the proceeds to get that through a grant from our local Waterloo Schools Foundation. And so we're just happy and excited for you to see that. They've added some interesting STEM activities in their preschool classrooms, written several grants to get additional STEM materials, and our STEM coordinator at the district wrote us into her budget, so we were looking at some of the new materials and then some of the tried and true materials in the classrooms today. One of the things we looked at were the new water centers and some of the materials that teachers are adding to it. We also saw some children who were doing some amazing things with blocks. Many of our classrooms um, have blocks, but not many of them have as many as the classroom that we saw today. And so one of the foundation grants that was written by preschool teachers this year is to get more blocks in the classroom. They had block structures up for like two weeks. And I love that too, because they learned to respect their work, you know, they don't go around and knock it over and accidentally bump into it, you know, they respect one another. When a teacher puts out open-ended activities, students can do many different things with them. And what we observed today was a, a beginning ramps builder and a very sophisticated ramps builder in one classroom. They were both equally engaged in the activity because it was meeting their needs. We are challenging all of our students. We want to just be mindful and purposeful in our instruction and what it is that we're trying to do in pre-K. I think we're just being more intentional, more focused on that, making sure that we are delivering that type of instruction that will again get our students to real world experiences. Do you know what it means to be a Blue Zone school? No, I really don't. Enlighten me. Students at Irving Elementary know what it means to, and they're getting ready to be healthy in everything they do in school. 
let's get a glimpse of what they're doing to become a Blue Zone school. This is a Blue Zones school certificate that you are going to be able to proudly display for everyone to see here at Irving. So I'm going to give this to Corey and Principal Toomey, and we will get a photo after, after the assembly. A Blue Zone school is a part of the Blue Zone project. Um, which is a community-based project where it's improving people's health and wellness, uh, basically for students and staff to both become healthier individuals and live longer, happier lives. So it's a great program that is just incorporating physical activity and healthy eating into our lives. A couple other things that we're doing is we're doing the fifth grade Blue Zone Challenge. That's the fifth grade trying to monitor how much TV time they get, how much sugary drinks or foods that they get, how many fruits and vegetables they get. They're having a competition between the other fifth grade classes and seeing who can do the best job of watching the least amount of TV and eating the good foods and taking away the sugar foods. It's also part of uh, getting more physical activity, making sure that we're getting plenty of physical activity in PE and not only in PE but outside of the class, which is really important. My most important thing is that the kids want to be physically active and healthy their entire lives. Not taking the Blue Zone Challenge is awesome because we, it helps us keep track of how much physical activity and fruits and vegetables we have each day. I know it's going to help uh, everybody in our school get healthier because Blue Zones encourages kids to eat more fruits and vegetables and get more exercise every day. I get to uh, get healthier and more active. Well, I'm starting to walk my dog outside. I'm eating more fruit every day and less TV. Now most people see us as a healthy school. It's good to be healthy and if you want to be healthy then it's good for your peers to be healthy too and not encourage you to eat anything bad. We're incredibly proud that we can be a Blue Zone school, that we get the opportunity to be a part of a great program that just promotes health and embodies that whole concept of being healthy individuals, being physically active. So many studies say that physical activity improves the kids' concentration and learning, gets their blood flowing through their body. Um, and that also is, you know, it just transports to the classes as well and then improving their grades, which is a really neat thing that that can do too. It's been a tremendous opportunity to work with the Waterloo schools. The three schools that are designated, we know that the changes that they've made are very sticky and that it's going to continue on to improve kids' well-being. So it's been a win for, I think, the school, the students, the staff, and the families that are actually getting taught by the student. I'm Shadow Wilson. I'm Xavier Howard. Did you know learning could be fun? Yeah, I didn't know that. It can be. The students in this Kingsley Elementary classroom are able to learn math while playing games purchased with a grant. Watch this example of how the teacher gets the students to learn through playing games. If I put that there, Courtney can gobble me. Then I can gobble again with my big piece, and then no one can gobble this up. Right now we're kind of in our supplemental time at the end of math. Um, and they are doing some strategic reasoning games that we got through the McElroy grant. And we actually purchased these games K through 2, so we have other classrooms doing this as well. And it's just a time where they can increase the reasoning skills um, while I am working with a small group on intervention skills. These are all math games, so you learn like math and like all these games are strategy games where you have to have a strategy to like try to win. We learn a lot playing the games and they are fun to play. You're learning strategies to, to make you win. You can play them and have fun. Some of the games are designed to kind of have um, additional practice on certain skills. We have some addition, subtraction games that they can kind of increase those skills and that fluency. Other ones, like they said, are just kind of the strategic and the reasoning where they are very naturally differentiated. So it might kind of be different for different students depending on kind of what level their mathematical thinking is at this time. It also helps them to work on their social interaction skills as well and just their problem solving during the games. Thank you for watching this Expo edition of Waterloo School Student News. I'm Kayon Moore. And I'm Richie Miller. Have a great day.